is Santi, Santiago Torres. I live in Spain, I am from Colombia, uh, and I'm going to do a presentation about fraction and split setups. Uh, I've been working with uh, sewing on slack lines for three years already, and right now I'm more specialized in highline setups, fractionings, uh, etc. Et so let's start. Sorry for the old school presentation. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the purpose. My second point it was the purpose of splitting. So, the purpose of splitting a setup is uh, safety in the in a backup uh, backup pole event. So, if we have a 200 meter island, for example, and we have a backup pole, that backup pole can be potentially really big and dangerous. So that's the main purpose, I would say, of splitting setups, uh, taking away that risk, because it gets at some point that the backup is just useless. For example, the one kilometer Highland record that we did a bunch of years ago. Uh, the second purpose is this, the integrity of the system, the safety of the system, in the case that we have a, a scenario where the wind breaks the tapes. So, we all know this situation where tapes start breaking, uh, lines get oscillating. The smaller your fractioning, the less chances uh, you have this to happen, or the less consequences uh, for this to happen. For example, a couple of weeks ago in Italy, we had a 210 meter and 180. The 210 was fractioned, uh, the 180 was not. We got a really strong storm. The 180 got completely the tape. Uh, got damaged, had to cut the end. Uh, the 210 got the tape only one fraction of the line, and everything was perfect. And the third purpose uh, is the easiness of transportation. It's not the same carrying your 400 meter setup uh, all in one backpack, or being able to carry it in 50s, hundreds, and just connecting connecting it at, at the spot. So. That's the purpose of splitting. I'm going to talk about two basic concepts. As you see, there's fraction and split. So, uh, fractioning. And is the is a highline system prepared in a way where webbing, main and backup, work as an independent section. So, if we have a 200 meter line with the backup. <laughs> so if we have this 200 meter high line that we talked before, uh, this is working as a system. So the idea of fraction is connecting, for example, here, here, and here, every 50 meter section. So if we have a fail in this part of the system, only this part of the backup will, uh, will get engaged. Uh, reducing the backup pole and the stress over all the system, because we will have this part getting activated and all this part of the main will keep uh, working as, as usual. Can you hand me the paper? Okay, so this is fractioning, is splitting, is making individual systems inside of the same high line. And then we're talking about splitting. In, a, in splitting, we're, we're talking about uh, just having a setup in different pieces. Like we can have uh, 200 meters. Same, same, but instead of carrying this 400 something meters of webbing, we can just have a couple of pieces. In this case, we will have 100 and 100, and we can take this apart and this apart. So it's way easier to carry and easier to work with. So. 
it looks good like that. Is it too dark? Is it? Okay. Let's go for this was the basic basic concept. I'm going to talk about uh, the fractioning systems that I mostly the ones that I work with, even though there's more. We have the P loops. That look like this. You have your main stitched here, stitched here, a little connection loop, and here we have the fractions that look like this. We have the main. This is stitch with a connection loop, and this is a stitch, or in this part here, here, and another one facing the opposite way. Here we will have a quick link. We will talk after how it's connected. We have uh, the Type C, which is your main. Here you have your backup, and your backup is it's directly straight to the to the main. Then we have another type of fractioning that is a uh, fractioning in the connections. Uh, the most famous example will be the enough split, where we have, uh, let's say, 50 meter sections. And in this part here, we connect mains and backups in a way that we isolate the system. And last one, I'm not going to talk very much about it because I don't work with it and I don't like it very much is Dura la Vida. This is just a personal opinion. Uh, Dura la Vida is uh, you have a main here. Uh, there's the version one and two, but this, the idea is kind of the same. So you have a stitch here, you have a closed circle of webbing, and it goes around here. And you use the connector in this part. So you need a stitch here, one or two stitches here. And another stitch here. This is the main fractioning systems that I want to talk about. Uh, so, uh, each kind of setup, each kind of fractioning system has a uh, different characteristics, right? So, uh, the characteristics that I uh, going to speak about is the Walkability. 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 Or the cleanness of the connection. Uh, I'm going to talk about the well, the strength. We all know what is it. Uh, the preparation time. Uh, versatility uh, the adjustability and the cost and weight so uh, we all know if we talk about if we walk a uh, fraction high lines there's sometimes we have connections that you just don't want to step on them you have to slow down stretch your legs trying to overpass the connection that's uh, the walkability for example in the systems that we were talking about a uh, type c is the best by far on it it's just a tape that is fractioning your line so you feel nothing you have the T-loops that it's, it can be kind of tricky. It depends a lot what's the preparation of the T-loop. If you tape it properly, if you tie the knot properly, it can be clean. If you do it wrong, it can be quite bad. The fracture, kind of the same. And the fractioning in the connection, for example, the in-off split. Uh, 
when you join the lines, it can be a little bit complex. For example, the in of split, if you have a, a quick link working straight up in this position after you use the a, eight shape on the shackle, it's quite bad to step on it because it just kicks you out of the line. So uh, this is a very important part of the systems. Uh, about strength, I wouldn't be much concerned because we are supposing that the person that is doing this for your setups, uh, it's a professional and is not doing anything dangerous. Uh, and it's in a, it has a safety margin. The only thing I will mention in strength is, for example, when we use T loops, one way to use the T loops is. This is the webbing, we have the T-loops here, and one option is you have your backup, do a knot, connect it through a quick link, and it keeps going. So in this case, we have a reduction of the breaking strength of your backup. Uh, it's not a good thing to have a reduction on the system, but if you have 200 meters and it's fraction every 50, I'd rather have fra uh, smaller fractions uh, which are not going to be able to see such a high load where the breaking strength reduction is concerning. Uh, about the strength, there's some brands that say that, for example, T loops are not strong enough. Uh, stitching wise, I think it just depends who does the stitching because the breaking strength values, uh, there's a huge variability depending uh, in between brands. So just try to inform yourself and look the best option for you. Uh, preparation time, that's, uh, well, we all understand. What is it? Uh, it's not the same having to prepare an enough split. If you have prepared it any time, you know what it is. Uh, you have to arrive to the anchor, uh, connect your soft shackles, your quick links, uh, use a lot of tape to preparing it, to try to make it clean. With T-loops, it's kind of the same. It takes a little bit shorter, maybe. With Type-C, uh, there's no preparation time, depending the kind of setup that you do. Uh, Type-Cs are not very common, but I think for long high lines, is the feature, is the best option you can have. Uh, yeah, so there's no preparation time. In the other ones, you go bigger and bigger. And you have also more chances of making mistakes. Uh, preparation time, versatility. So the versatility, I will focus on the ability of using your webbing, for example, as main or as backup, being able to interchange it. Uh, we, if we have a Type-C, it would be the opposite of versatility because we have a backup that it's dedicated. We cannot use it anymore as a main. Uh, well, some exceptions. It always depends on the setup because you have many, many variables and different kind of setups. Uh, with the T-loops, uh, I really like the T-loops uh, versatility-wise because you can do a knot and connect it to your to your main. And once you're done, you disconnect it, get uh, rid of the knot and use your backup as main, switch it. Uh, Fraxio, kind of the same as T-loops. They are optimized to working a little bit different. For example, T-loops, uh, it's better to, they're better to have a single point connection. So for example, if we have the knot, if you have a fraction, it looks like this. This is a better if you have, for example, a backup loop that comes here and another backup loop that comes here and you join all these four. So they have a little bit better uh, applications. Uh, fractions I don't like personally to use it with knot because you have to choose either you do two knots or you do one and you choose one side and I'm not a very big fan of parts of the system moving around. Uh, 
that's about versatility, adjustability. Uh, it's the ability of changing the configuration of your system once it's rigged. If we have a Linux fleet, let's say 50 main, 53 backup, for example, uh, with tension domain and the backup is tight, we cannot do anything at that point. Uh, the setup, either you have to do rig, another extenders, uh, longer extenders, something similar, but you cannot do much. If you have, uh, let's say, 100 meter with a T loop with your backup connected here, if this part of the backup is too short, you can go on the line, uh, disconnect this, redo the backup, and uh, add more backup on the uh, on one of the fractions if it's needed. So, and cost weight. Uh, it all depends what you want to do. Uh, type C, the cost of the stitching is less, but then you have a dedicated backup, which makes it more expensive. Dura la vida is uh, complex and it's more expensive. T loops is a little bit more expensive. Uh, I think it's important to to know that there's no better option. I wouldn't say that there's one option that's uh, better than the others. They just different uh, qualities, different properties, and depending what you want to do with your webbings and the way that you want to use them, uh, it's you have better better options for it. So uh, let's see some pictures uh, of the of all these examples. We have a Type C connection. It's in this part. We can see the splitting is really small. Uh, you have no problems with the rings uh, being uh, passing by. Uh, this is a 50 meter setup split in the middle with, we can see on top of the picture, uh, an extender. So you can use both the white webbing here, which is half marathon, and both the SOS as main uh, interchangeable. Let's see another one. Uh, this is the extender. This is a type C. This is a small type C. This is a tape stitch. Is a small tape C that uh, which was intended to uh, substitute taping. This was done in a 400 meter of Y2K, which is stitched every 12 meters. So uh, the line doesn't have tapes anymore which is very good for really strong wind situations. And if you rig it in festivals and people dish fold, they don't leave a huge loop behind. <laughs> uh, here uh, we have on the moonwalk, this is a double fracture system. Okay. As you can see, we have on the top part, this is the main, uh, we have one fracture, two fractions, the quiggling, and the bottom, we have exactly the same. This is a very clean, very strong connection. Uh, for this, either you have a dedicated backup, you can use extenders. It has to be done thoroughly. It's not like a T-loop that you just make a knot and connect it. Here, uh, really low quality picture of a T-loop. And this is uh, another option but it's okay. This is a T loops on half marathon. So that's how they look like. I had some pictures of a couple of connections. This one, it's a T loop with T loop. Uh, this was a setup of Sonic light main, a wizard backup, but with T loops and optimized to be connected uh, knowing the exact backup length. And the connection is really clean. It's not setup very difficult to see but very nice to walk and the last one i'm gonna show you is this one so this is a long uh, highline kind of setup this is a 150 meter piece if i don't remember wrong so what we have in this part is the connection loops 
that you attach to the next piece and the fractioning of the line is done uh, mainly on these big stitches that we have see, we see here this is a really strong type c connection that can withstand over 20 kilonewtons and we can see here that there are some tape stitches in the middle with a lower breaking strength but it also fractions our line and it can act as a dissipator so i think this is most of it i don't know if you have any questions any doubts i'll be willing to answer them is it <laughs> i have one something yeah what's your favorite i don't have a favorite if you go for long high lines uh, type c for me is the way to go if if you have short pieces let's say 80 100 to 200 and you use both main and backup i think t loop it's a good option uh, i'm not a big fan of v -nop split for two reasons the the first of all is that the connections are not that clean and with the enough split uh, system uh, it says that you have 50 meters a uh, main 50 meter backup and you add uh, an extender and it makes the setup a little bit more complex because you need to get the extenders be besides having some loops and the connections are not that clean I, it's not my favorite but for example my setup i have it that way so there's a little bit of everything that's i i think it depends a lot on the situation if i had a lot of money i could do whatever i will go to type c for expensive lines <laughs> did you go over like the backup in main where you put the backup zone loop into the main zone loop and just use two soft shackles that way Yes, this is the way that I usually connect my split setup. Like yeah. when you have the four loops, two main, two backup, you use the one quick link and one soft shackle or two soft shackles. That's my favorite way to do the fractioning, fractioning in the connections. I didn't mention it uh, because I don't know what's the how how to call it this way you know because we have the end of split and we know it's like with the figure eight with the with the eight shape soft shackle there's this other alternative way that i think it's better and it's also a little bit more redundant if we take a close look to it but yeah i think it's one of the best ways of doing this kind of fractioning i call it the loop on loop system or lol <laughs> it's a good name <laughs> really good name <laughs> Okay, any more questions? Yeah? Read it, Sarah? Uh, okay, yeah, uh, so I've been doing some brake testing in knots, mm -hmm. mainly for this por uh, purpose, for T loops, and um, there's a quite a big difference, well, pff, not super big but important enough uh, between overhands and figure of eight i will go for figure eight even though it's a little bit smaller it's a little bit bigger i mean uh, it's not that size critical i mean if you have an overhand you can do a figure eight and make it take almost the same space uh, it's important to keep in mind what webbing you're using as backup and keep in mind the backup uh, the strength reduction that you may have in the backup and also, for example, I refuse to do uh, T-loops uh, kind of setups uh, with distances longer than 65, 70 meters, because the longer the fractioning, the less safety factor that you're having. So keep that into consideration. Hey, Johan, we can hear you. Uh, Santi. <laughs> Santi, thank you for the presentation, man. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you answered already like a lot of my my questions when you were here, but uh, <laughs> but um, I have a question like regarding Type C. Um, it's known actually that a lot of uh, nylon webbings they stretch or they get longer over time, um, so they like permanently. Um, what if your yeah? What if you have a Type C setup, which is initially fine? 
yeah. but eventually over over time and and usage yeah, eventually you're stuck in a in a fixed in a, in a, in a titan backup system because your main line will lengthen probably over time and your backup not that's so, a uh, very interesting question. It's getting quite common to find a tight backups on Type C. So, for example, the way that Infinity does it with Pink Tube is you have your main, you have your, let's say this is an 80 meter, and if I'm not wrong, uh, it's split it every every 20. So you have 20, 40, 60, and 80. And obviously what happens is that this line stretches and at some point these fixed backups, uh, fixed length backups get engaged and then you have a shitty freestyle line. I think this is not a very good idea because we have uh, nylon webbings we know that have uh, properties like they stretch a lot, they creep a lot with time, they, their stretch changes with humidity. so. If you're doing this, you're just loading a gun and knowing that it's going to blow up at some point. Right now, what brands are starting to do, uh, I've heard some people calling it Type X, which kind of makes sense. This is the Type C, this is the Type X. The Balance Community was doing something like that uh, not so long. They released something like that not so long ago. So it's just one connection of the middle of the line. We still have 80 meters here uh, this is same length main same length backup but what we do is we add an extender on this part let's say to add the needed backup which you can regulate it in that way and it gives you the option also if this is a and this is b you use this you use a as main and when it's used a lot, uh, you can flip it and use B as main. I'm going to leave aside the conversation if you should be using uh, webbing that you don't consider <laughs> safe as backup, but that's a little bit the idea. <laughs> okay, thank you, Santi. That was a, a good answer. <laughs> I mean, if you have you, just I mean, if you have Santi, the at the festival, we can solve the problem, but uh, <laughs> if you don't have you around, <laughs> it's uh, it's more tricky. Okay, I think Augustin here has uh, a question. Yeah, so between two webbings that are have very different stretch together. Yeah, and you're doing uh, it with um, well, type C, so you just like you have bar tag, bar tag, bar tag. Yeah, can it? It can, I, I mean, like that's my just my understanding, but I have not done any tests about it. That you can just load the first few bar tags because the stretch of one webbing is only in the first few bar tags and the backup webbing. So you have like you can have very weak connection if you do it like this. Yeah, that's a very good question, and I cannot give you an answer because over again, it depends a lot on the way that the stitching is done, because there are stitchings that are more flexible, more elastic. Uh, have a stronger strength for a uh, stress points so it's gonna depend a lot on the way that the stitching is done it's super critical uh, i did test on tubular nylon and polyester and the results are not uh, not bad not terrible uh, it depends a lot it depends a lot on the kind of stitching i can tell you my information about uh, this, but it's not going to be the same as Lucky Enough's kind of stitching, Riot kind of stitching, Aki's kind of stitching, which are like the most different ones, I would say. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> hey, Santi, I've Hello. got a question here. Yeah. Um, thanks for the presentation, first of all. It's really nice to talk about splits because it's... Um, it's a really nice way that we are exploring now to make everything safer. Um, I wanted to know from you about the type C, what's your calculation? Of course, depends on the webbing, but what's your range calculation to 
get the precisely backup length for certain main line. Okay, that's the that's the holy grail kind of my work, you know. So, for example, the thing is, I cannot give you an answer because it changes a lot. Like if you go, uh, if you do set up on, I don't know, uh, Y2K, Dynema, you're gonna have a uh, four percent, maybe. It depends how much you love you you tension it how big you like your backup it can go for starting from three and a half four percent uh so months ago i did a setup on purple and gold and it had above 26 percent even a brand new purple and gold which is insane <laughs> so there's no there's no correct answer here like for example myself i'm doing a my own database with these stretch things and I'm trying to collect because it's really, really, really hard to to get it properly. Like if you get if you get the new nylon webbing, it's gonna be it's gonna stretch way different than same webbing but older. So you have a lot of variables in there. Probably even between the batches. Yeah, between the batches probably there's a difference already. So do you think uh, rigging in the park and setting up it would be the um the most usual way to like set up the main line in the park with a pulley system and then um just run your loops in the bottom and then just probably like just yeah. tape around it to I, mark the position and then get someone to stitch it yeah i think you could even go for a um, even more realistic situation uh, and rig it in the high line have your high line rigged for three, four, five days, so it stretched all that it had to stretch, that it creeps everything. Uh, still, if you're having, having nylon, it's going to end up poorly. But I think that's the best you can do. Choose where you do want to do your fractioning, get the backup that you want, do a really big fix tape, and stitch it there. Cool. One more question in regards to... Uh, any sort of connection with soft shackles, um, let's say if you go double soft shackle, do you tape the, um, the news of the soft shackles just to make sure, or do you trust it? Fine. Okay. Uh, I like this question because I'm going to remind me of something that I didn't mention. Uh, for example, on fractioning on the end loops, you can use soft shackles and quick links. Uh, for fractions and T-loops, I will never use soft shackles just because it's a, a fabric on fabric. It has little to no protection. Uh, the size of the loops are small, which gets more stress. And now uh, going to your answer. When I do this kind of setups uh, with double soft shackle or quick link as main of soft shackle backup, I do as I splice a cord in the cross section of the soft shackle, uh, talking about uh, button nuts. So I have a locking mechanism for the soft shackles to not open. Uh, it's not very available. Uh, I think some brands like Slakino, Vanaki, they're splicing a uh, rubber cords to avoid this. I think taping should be fine. Uh, but that's just an opinion so <laughs> we can take our own criteria to manage the risks in there thank you okay <laughs> you're welcome arthur do we still have like two minutes or something i don't hear you sarah there's no, there's no talk after this one, so you can ask as much as you want. Okay, um, I don't have a, I have a question regarding a webbing, not even like connections or split ups, but um, we have the lift to be from Balance Community, and I wonder, like I was talking already with um, people who also own this line, and when we, when it's not like under tension, it's super squirreled up all the time. Like and everybody yeah. said like. It's that's normal, right? Or is this really normal? So yeah. I was talking like several owners, but I also want to ask all of you now. 
Okay, so from my experience, I, I've seen live TV uh, in person. Um, it's very particular, it's true. I spoke with Ian, that's sponsored by Balance Community. And what he told me, if I'm not wrong, I'm not trying to give a wrong message, is that the way that the live TV was weaved, the, you have two properties. You have the stretch of the weaving until it settles down, and you have a, the stretch of the material, in which in this case it would be the polyamide. So the idea was to optimize the weaving of the light to be in a way that there's no stretch of the weaving settling down, but it, you can go straight for the stretching of the material. That's the answer that he gave he gave me about the this particularly uh, we a uh, weaving pattern like you can see that the you have it flat and it looks like it has four twists. Yeah, uh, I've also noticed that on uh, lift two, and I, I'm guessing it has something to do with a different weave tension between the edges and the actual tubular portion in the middle. And I think that's what's causing it to, to look like pasta. You know, those, those curly ribbon pasta, that's what it looks like. It's because on those pasta, the edges are have less tension than in the middle. That's why they curl up like that. And I think that's the same thing with lift too. Okay, <laughs> so. Very uh, yummy webbing. Yeah, I hope this answer was Enough for you, Katrina. I cannot give you any more info because I don't want for I don't work for Balance Community. <laughs> yes, thank you. Philip is saying that there was another wearing from a French manufacturer that had the same. I have no knowledge of it. Uh, I don't know if Philip wants to share which wearing it could be, maybe, but I have no idea. <laughs> Even if you know. Uh, Mauna Kea. I think, Mauna Kea is very different. yeah, I think Mauna Kea is way different. I think the construction is, uh, of the Mauna Kea was a sling inside of a tubular. I may be wrong though. And it was a very heavy webbing, like 120 grams per meter, if I'm not wrong. And it was basically like a working sling inside of a tubular. I stitched all the way. Okay. We still have this ranking. Okay. Any any more questions? No. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry for the prehistoric of my age. Thank you. One more. Sorry. Yeah. So you were saying on your 400 meter Y2K, yeah, you done um, every 12 meters uh, the stitching tapes yeah. uh, to replace the tapes. But then within the 12, 12 meters, did you actually put normal tapes to break the um, like um, you know every 12 meters? the line will be the, the backup will be sort of the same way is that matter too much or okay uh, so first of all it's not my white okay i will wish <laughs> it was johan's here present uh so yeah that's what that was one of the concerning points that johan and i had uh, having a resonance in the system so for example in the belgium highland festival we rig it 430 uh, extended with some moonwalk in some fractions of the some 50 meter sections, uh, we didn't use tape at all to see if we could feel this uh, resonance effect. And in other sections, we put some tapes in the middle. Uh, to be honest, felt nothing. Uh, never saw 400 meter snake moving back and forth. Uh, you can always put the tape in the middle to change the distances. I, huh? <laughs> Augustan says that because we didn't tension enough. We tension until six, seven kilonewton and never saw this. So I would say it's good enough. I can't imagine, maybe there is, but I can't imagine having a bigger problem with resonance because of that. 
Cool. Thank you. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm the owner of the webbing, but I actually am the, the um, yeah, like Santi said, we didn't sign any problem. And I guess it also depends a bit on the length of the line. Like the, if the line, if we were using shorter sections because they're 50 meter sections, um, if you use shorter sections, sections, um, we'll probably use a bit more tape um, than on a long, really, really, on a really long piece, you don't even notice. You don't even notice that some, certain parts are not taped. So it's a really nice ecological solution. I mean, also wind-wise, at the festival, we had so much wind, and actually the Y2K didn't need any retaping. I mean, it, went it was super nice. 50, 60 kilometers per hour, probably. Uh, yeah, yeah, the wind added like easily one or two kilometers on the line. So, yeah, it's the, but never had a problem with the tapes because of this. So it's really a nice solution for dedicated setups. Huh? Like Y2K is, a, is, a, is really like the splits are like 50 and then something underneath, which is not, uh, which is a bit longer. Huh? So it's really nice to have it together. Thank you for your input, Johan. <laughs> Any more questions? Yeah, yeah, it's not a question, but just a reaction about the oscillation and uh, taping. If uh, the line is not uh, stitched, it's better to have uh, the same distance distances between the tapes, be because if you have different distances, you will have uh, a b one bigger loop, bigger than all the others, of course, because you have different distances. So that will be the loop that will take the um, most part, most uh, strength of the wind. So it will be the one that will fail first. And after it will be uh, like domino, like uh, unstitching, uh, un uh, untaping the, the, the old parts. So if you have all the, the um, uh, taped loop uh, the same length, you are, it's less likely to have this, uh, a domino thing. I mean, it's just my opinion, but uh, and also it's like um, to have the oscillation thing, you, you need some uh, a lot of tension, uh, really a lot of tension because, yeah, that's uh, after all the uh, wind uh, forts, uh, studies, and other, uh, that's something that you can see that. Yeah, that's not something which happened with eye lines, like really oscillation or big oscillation. It's really it it happens when it's uh, already too late, when the wind is really crazy, when you have crazy tension in the line. But it's not happening when you have less tension and still a lot of wind, but less tension. But it's more likely to have line D tape uh, at that point. So yeah, that's maybe also a point i don't know what's your thought about it but yeah i think what you're saying about the different distances on highline uh, theoretically it's true i think in the practice uh, leaving aside the difficulty part of it like getting 100 meter all tape equally you're gonna have a nightmare line probably uh i think in the end, if you have like a little bit bigger loop, let's say like seven meter ones, and then back you have like a four meter and a five meter, you just need someone to not take care properly of the tape or leash fall on it, or the tape is half broken. And suddenly your bigger, your biggest loop is not seven meters, but it's gonna be the other one that broke first, that it's gonna be nine. So I don't know about it, uh, you know, I think we kind of need this different backup loop size because if like I have a friend that says that Highland it's a lie and <laughs> because if you get all the same loops, it's just going to be a nightmare to walk. We kind of depend on, on that <laughs> to be able to walk our, our lines. Really good. Yoshi, Yoshi in the room says uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not a nightmare for him. It's the perfect for him. Yeah, but so. we're ta we're talking about humans, so. <laughs>
I, I don't want to interrupt any more of the questions or anything. You guys should stay as long as you want, but I just wanted to thank everybody that organized and uh, also the safety committee and Haitai, who has been president to it for, for their good work. And um, so that was a really cool event this year, uh, but I have to leave. So I just wanted to say thank you to everybody. Bye, Peter. Thanks for joining. Yeah, big thanks Thank to Tom, you, who organized most of it, and um, yeah, thanks to all the speakers. <laughs> um, this basically concludes the yeah, if there's safety no... event, if there are no further questions. Um, Tom's also back. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, tonight there's the ISA General Assembly at 7 CEST or UTC plus 2 um, if you like to join or if you are part of a member then please do join um, yeah we'll see you then are we using the same link yes okay good thanks a lot guys for joining thank you everyone if you <laughs> haven't filled out the survey and if you want to do so <laughs> the data helps us um, It'd be nice if you could manage. Also, if you want to report an accident, now is your chance to open the Slack on Accident and Incident Report form. Thanks a lot. Always share the posts, maybe the Five Fridays, if you find them interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye bye.